the very first thing that we need to start working on is auditory discrimination. That means you need to make sure that your student can hear the difference between red and wed, rows and woes. Um, so that's gonna be the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna design an activity that helps your student to hear the difference between red and wed. After we've done some auditory discrimination and we've practiced listening to what an R sounds like, um, then we start talking about the parts of the tongue. Um, this is another step that is really important to never skip. And again, I have been so guilty in the past of skipping it because I just would jump into, okay, move your tongue here, move your tongue there, do this, do that. But my kids didn't have any understanding of what each part of their tongue felt like. So after we've done some auditory discrimination, now we're talking about the parts of the tongue. And there are a few different ways that I like to teach this. And I spend a lot of time teaching this um, just to make sure that my kids really get it. Okay, let me show you what I got. So the first thing I pull out is my Mighty Mouth Puppet. And we kind of break down the puppet and we talk about the parts that we need to make this particular sound. So for an R, we talk about the tip of the tongue, we talk about the sides of the tongue and we talk about the back of the tongue because those are all gonna be key players in how we make an R. So we spend a lot of time, you know, finding it first on the puppet so that they can see it. And then, so that's our visual. And then we um, go over to the mirror that I have over there and we pull out our suckers. You can use a sucker or fun dip. Those are the fun ways to do it. Or we also use tongue depressors sometimes. And if you need to target this lesson in more than, you know, more than one session, pull a different thing out each session. Like that's awesome. So what we do is we use our sucker to find the places on ourselves. So I will say, okay, here's the tip of my tongue. Uh, I'll show them. Yeah, you know, I do it on me, they get their sucker, they do it on them. And then we do the back. Uh, and then we touch the sides. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay? And we do that over and over again until the student is able to feel where the back of their tongue is, where the sides of their tongue is, and where the tip of their tongue is. So this maybe takes, you know, five, sometimes 10 minutes, depending on the kid, to do both the visual and the sucker activity. The sides of your tongue are going to touch inside your back teeth in these places here. You're going to pull your tongue back and keep it tight and high. It's gonna be kind of shaped like this, like it's bunched. So pull it back and up and tight as you turn your voice on. Err, err. If your tongue isn't high enough or isn't tight enough, it's not gonna sound quite right. It's gonna sound like uh instead of err. So you have to make sure it's nice and high. If you drop it, it'll be uh, but you wanna keep it high and tight, err. Uh. I'm gonna open my mouth a little wider than I usually would so you can see my tongue. Watch as my tongue goes back and up and gets tight so I can make the err uh sound. Err, err, err. Here's what we want to do whenever we're eliciting that R sound. And it's a lot of times it's difficult. So if you have a mirror, I would get a mirror for your little one, or you could practice in the bathroom. Um, you could do this three times a day. So maybe every time your child brushes their teeth or every time you give them a snack, we practice our R first. And the first way that you can do this is the lips need to be really open and out. So the way that I usually do this is say, nice, big, pretty smile. Now say E and E gives our tongue a nice lateral um, position to start in. And I want you to notice my neck here is flexing because my lips are pulled out. So whenever I say E, you can see right here that my neck is flexing. And that tells me that the face, that my lips are pulling on the sides of my tongue and that the tongue is flattened. And that's what we need in order for to get the tip of the tongue up and back, which is what we were practicing with holding our goldfish or our Cheerio up. So again, we want, a lot of times my kids will do this, and I say, open your mouth. And if they have trouble first, I'll say, ah, e, you do, you do, ah, e. And the ah helps them open their mouth a little bit, a little bit more than if they're saying, e, like this with their mouth closed. So we want the mouth 
open and stretched out like an E sound. And again, you can see my neck is flexing. Your little one's neck will flex as well. We want the tongue tip lifted up and back. And so then we'll go E, er, and I'm just making a slight adjustment. Now that my tongue is flat, I'm just pulling my tongue tip up and in the back of my mouth. Er, just like that. So I say, ah, E, er, and again, just picking my tongue tip up. So for rabbit, you'll see my mouth is wide open and my neck is flexed and my lips are outward. What we don't want is your lips falling forward. So like this, oh, your child might say, oh, rabbit. And I'll say, oh, don't let your lips fall off. Pull them back up, pull them back up. Um, and so again, watch my lips. We want, we do not, we want them to be open and out grab it the whole time. It's, it's a lot of motor coordination going on here, which is why it's important that the tongue is strong in order to hold, hold the tongue tip up and back in the position that it needs to be. I found it quite useful to get the kid to move their tongue up and down one way or the other to figure out where their tongue is um, supposed to be to make the perfect utter sound. And what I call it we usually call it the finger trick, meaning we're trying to move the tongue up and down by pretending we can trigger or we can use our finger as some sort of dial to move our tongue up and down. For example, when our tongue is low, our finger is low. So this is what I usually play with a kid. Um, I will ask them to do Notice my tongue is going up and down and I'm actually doing like a backwards C, but kids um, who does the mountain tongue can also do that. So I use my tongue to signify the changes in the height of their tongue. And then we try to find the spot. You know, when your tongue is low, it sounds like a ah, 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 ah. And once we hit the er, we try to try to um, replicate that position so that we can get the er sound consistently eventually while combining it with other sounds. All you need is a dental floss stick. Let your student know that you're going to let them experience exactly what it feels like to form the perfect R sound. Then you give your student the stick and ask him or her to put their tongue under the floss that is between the prongs and pull the floss with their tongue back into their mouth to form the perfect placement of the R. It looks like this. Er. Uh. As you can see, this little tool available at your local drugstore gives your students the perfect mechanics to produce R. Who knew? Once they feel for themselves exactly where the placement occurs, they're more likely to be able to reproduce the correct placement themselves. A great tip is to try to use words that end with K and G. Um, that's because it's going to help pull that tongue back. So if we say rake, or rag, then it's already helping pull that tongue back. It's just great to start out with those types of words. Co-articulation can be really helpful when you're working at R at the end of a word. So you can say the bear rakes, car runs. And so you have those two R's kind of merging together. That can help facilitate that R at the end of the word because it's actually kind of cruising into the beginning of the word um, for that client working on the R. To make a good er sound, I need you to think about swallowing your tongue. What does that mean? That means pulling your tongue back as far as you can in your mouth. You gotta use all of these muscles to pull it back like you're gonna swallow it. So you could do that one of two ways. You can either keep the tongue tip down and pull, pull, pull it back, use those muscles like you're gonna swallow it and keep it back there. Or you can flip your tongue tip up and pull it back as far as you can like you're gonna swallow it. That means you gotta engage all these muscles to keep it back there. If your tongue doesn't stay back there and it comes down, you're gonna have a sneaky uh sound. Ooh, that is not a good sound. Instead of saying the word bear, you're gonna say the word bear, right? What do we do with sneaky uh? We gotta take it and we gotta throw it away. So what I tell my kids in this instance is to forget everything they think they know about making the R sound. And we're just going to move our tongue around in our mouth. And when I think we've got it in the right spot, we freeze the tongue, freeze it, and then just turn our voice on. So what I tell them to do are three things. 
First of all, we have to be able to make the back of our tongue wide and I call it the fat tongue. So it looks like this, where they're just stretching it out. Once they can do that, we have to pull it back and up so that it, the sides of the back of our tongue are actually touching our top molars. And once it's there, I make sure that we know it has to be really strong and tense so that we're flexing that muscle, but still keeping it wide and touching those top molars. Then we freeze there and we just turn our voice on. Rrr. Fly from an L to an R. L is made with the tip of the tongue and it's made in a very similar manner to R. And so sometimes if you curve your tongue far back enough from an L, you can transform your L into an R. So let's try it. Oh, my tongue is going back. Oh. Did you hear what the L turned into a R? Listen again. Oh. That's the spot where we need our kids to get. And often if they have a good L, that's a great jumping point to try get our R sound from it. Another good way to try to get our R is with the G, because G, G, G also happens far back in our throat with our tongue, like in the way back of our mouth, I mean. So we can also try the word grow. When you're making that G, your tongue's already back there. So getting to your next sound, the R sound, after the G um, can sometimes help. So try that now for me. Try grow. See if you can get it. Sometimes that really helps with trying it with that G. Let's do it. We're going to do it two more times together. Grow. And again, grow. So you can feel like your tongue is really far back there. Grow. Now, another thing I want you to notice um, is the shape of my mouth. So when I'm saying the word grow, you can see like my lips are not rounding like woo, like a woo sound. I'm just saying grow. This R is really a tongue sound. It happens with our tongue. So now watch my mouth if I do a little bit different. Guo. See how my lips come forward? When I make the W sound, which is what I just did, my lips come forward and they round like an O. Um, so that's a different sound, right? So if I did guo, round lips, like a W, okay? Um, grow, you can see nothing's really happening with my lips when I make that sound. One tip that I have when I like to do this with my patients is I use a spoon and I pull this back where my molars are and I show them that the tongue needs to be flat and then it kind of curves up a little bit. We want that tip to be up. So then I first start off with an E sound. So pulling the tongue back and flat and the tip just a little bit up. So E. Your mouth is also a little bit open if you notice. So Another suggestion that I have is to say the sound ah, e. That will get the tongue in place of where we want it to be when making that R sound. This is our waterfall sound. So our shh, what your tongue is doing when you're making the shh sound is it's, it's cupped. So when you do it, shh, your tongue is actually already, the sides are t touching the top of the teeth. We are gonna move that into sure. So all you're gonna do is tell your child, say sure. So moving the tongue from sure, pulling it back a little bit, and that's gonna elicit an R sound. Sure, sure. So we can put it all together. Sure, sure. It's only moving back a little bit, but SH is great for that because it's already almost an R sound. You just have to pull that tongue back a little bit more in order to get that R sound.
I want you to try this one thing. We're going to try it. Whis it's called the whisper technique. And I want you to say, seer, seer, and then whisper, yes. Go, seer, yes, seer, yes. Okay, now whisper the yes. Okay. Pretend like you're going to say it, but trick your tongue. Seer, yes. Yes. What would you do with your tongue right there? It felt funny, and it, I just... It went like... <laughs> Did it go up like a Yeah. Mouth? Okay. You know why it felt funny? Why? Because that was right. <laughs> You're saying it right that time.